Hello YouTube, welcome to this short video to just go over some undervolt uh, settings that I'm using uh, with my 5900X to uh, both increase performance and reduce temperatures. Um, what I'm going to show you in this video or later on in this video when we get over to the BIOS section is three different settings that I tried um, and the three settings you can kind of try yourself to see how you get on. Each one kind of increases performance but also with that brings up the temperatures. Uh, of the three options, option one, which I'll outline in the video later, is the one that I use here. I've just found it the best in relation to keep the temperatures down and getting a slight increase in performance over stock. Um, the one thing to note about these processes, processors is, is, along with the 5800X, which, which I use, 5900X, which we're discussing today, as they run a little hotter than what we might be used to from before, but that is, that is absolutely fine. Um, so listen, what I'm going to do here is show you, before I get into the bias settings, I'm just going to show you uh, Cinebench here running for a minute, show you the uh, temperatures I'm getting with the settings I have, um, and you know, show you the all-core um, clock speeds here with HW monitor, just to get an idea of what I'm getting. I think originally when on stock at all-core on a Cinebench R23, and this is a free piece of software you can download for testing, but with this I was getting around 4.2, a little over 4.2 on the all-core, uh, and with the oh, with the settings I'm going to show you, I'm getting kind of the 4.4, 4.5 all core. Uh, my Cinebench score comes in after 10 minutes at about 21,900 mark, um, and it goes over to 22, near to 23 if I'm using some of the other settings. But listen, I let you, because a lot of this depends on the cooler you have. Uh, you know, if you got a good skew of the 5900X, because not all CPUs are treated or created equally. Um, so try the three settings, see how you get on. It's all going to come down to balance of temperature to performance and what you prefer for your system. Uh, right, so settings will follow this part of the video. I'll just quickly show you here uh, one or two quick things before we start. The first thing is in relation to power settings, I have found um, using the system in balance mode um, keeps temperatures at best in check. Uh, like I've used, I used the high performance for a while, but I found it kind of uh, boosting too often. And you know, when and I idle the temperatures a little too high. I've changed it over to balance. Noticed absolutely no effect in gaming. The processor will still boost to full speed and it needs to, but it allows it to uh, hit those um, pre-boost levels you know, at a lower clock speed, keeping the temperatures down. So I would advise for kind of normal use, balanced in your power settings. Um, in relation to some of the uh, hardware I'm using, the motherboard I'm using is the Asus ROG Strict X570 gaming motherboard. So the settings I'm going to show today are for this motherboard, similar with other ASUS motherboards, and some of these options, these options should exist in any motherboard that allows the AMD Precision Boost Overdrive. Um, also, the cooler I'm using is the e Kraken X53. It's a 240mm cooler, a uh, two-fan cooler. Um, so just to give you some idea of what, um, what I'm using to cool my machine. Now, if you have a better cooler, you can use some of the other options I'm going to show you here that you'll get better temperatures than I do, obviously. And obviously, if yours is a lesser cooler or maybe a, you know, a slightly lower to mid-range kind of air cooler, um, you, again, I, I would try some of the, probably the option that I, that I use, option one here, is probably the best to go with for kind of um, a mid-range cooler. But as I said, I've included three options, which we'll get to in a minute. Uh, right, so uh, Cinebench R23 here. I'll just quickly kick off a CPU multi-core uh, run here. Okay, so we also have, let me just clear the max min here. Um, I was doing some other testing there that had it at the A3. Right, so Cinebench R23 here running a multi-core. Um, I'm also going to open here is my Kraken software just to get some more details on screen. So generally this is the value I'm going off over here. It's kind of, I suppose it's the higher of, of the clocks that I'm getting. So it's around the 4.4, a little over 4.4 at my clock speed. Uh, this will run fine. Temperature, as you see here, is a 63 degrees. Um, I have room to, to let this go higher. Um, I let this run for 10, 30 minutes. It doesn't really matter. The temperature um, generally does not go over 70. Uh, it's jumped up there to 67, 66. Uh, it'll stay around between that kind of 65 to 70 degrees range. So there's you know, plenty of room to, um, if I wanted to increase the performance a bit more. But listen, I'm happy. I don't see a real difference here. I'm happy with these general all-core clocks. And as I said, um, you know, try it on yours, see how you get on. So that's just to show you 
I'm not going to let this run out of full 10 minutes because you know, I've tried this a number of times. It, generally, the temperature doesn't change. It's around that 65 to 70 degrees. As you see now, it's at 64. This is running away. Um, and it's the same with other uh, benchmark tools I've used, such as things like ADA64. Okay, so um, let's stop that. And at stock now, I was easily getting closer to 80. Um, I mean, kind of 75, 80. Um, running this at stock so these settings I'm going to show you definitely made a difference even with the option using here which is a very conservative way of undervolting your uh, 5900x and allowing um, a performance boost uh, just have a quick look then at single core again single core temperatures get a little bit higher as you see we're hitting up here now 74 degrees we're hitting around the 4.9 um, Generally, the highest I'll see it go to in gaming is kind of the 4.9, so uh, 4.9.5 almost um, is generally where I'd see it go. So temperatures in the single core uh, generally stay between the 70 and 75, which again, I'm happy enough with uh, for what I'm getting here on uh, performance. Um, yeah, so let's just give you an idea of what uh, the temperatures look like with the settings I'm going to show you. So I'm going to switch over now to the uh, bias settings. I'm going to show you three options. Option one what i've applied here it's the most conservative i've messed with the others i just found it's just it's just the easiest to apply but have a look at all three uh test yourselves with your 5900x and see how you get on uh, leave a comment below with the kind of temperatures you're getting and, and if you're seeing an increase in your clock speeds or any questions you have about the overclocking um this won't be the same for all motherboards um but you know if the precision boost overdrive option is there the options you see in my screen my settings should be there somewhere within your motherboard. Just make sure you update it before you try because it's a recent enough addition to these motherboards. Uh, okay, YouTube, in this part of the video, I'm just going to show you the bias settings I'm using for giving a slight increase in performance to my 5900X and in turn controlling temperatures. So by doing these settings, we get to reduce the temperatures a little bit, get them more under control and increase performance over stock. I'm going to show you three options here. Um, for three different settings depending on how much power you want in relation to your temperatures you know how much you want those uh, all core clocks to increase uh, you know to get up to like around the 4.7 level um and then the differences in temperatures you can test for yourself the first option i show here option one is the one i'm currently using it, from testing these different ways just in relation to the performance the temperature difference i found option one which is you know the least amount of um configuration here is the best option in relation to getting that all core between 4.4 and 4.5 and keeping the temperatures on something like Cinebench R23 around the 69, 70 degrees mark. So let's quickly go through these settings to show you. So as we know already here, we're on the uh, ASUS X570 gaming eboard. So it may be different for, um, th these options will be different for different boards, but this will give you some idea of where you might find those options on your particular board. The one thing I would say is to make sure that you get, um, you know, you update the latest version because Precision Boost 2, which this is using, is, is a newer implementation on these motherboards. So uh, a recent update, um, is you may find it getting enabled through a recent update, whereas uh, on an older version, it may not be there. So from within the um, ASUS motherboard, I'm going to go into Advanced. Now, just to show originally, I thought it was in AI Tweaker here and down here under um, Precision Boost Overdrive. That's not where we want to be here, but that, that's what I originally, you know, I was getting mixed up before the start. So just make sure you go through your settings in your own motherboard in case this option is hidden. But for the ASUS motherboard, it's in Advanced and we go down here to AMD Overclocking. So this is the option you want to get in. So within there, we click accept to the kind of the mandatory overclocking warning. Um, now just remember any settings you change in here, you can test and run and, and you can just, you know, either revert your, your bias back to default or, or just turn off the setting again if it's not working for you. So it's easy enough to test. None of these values I'm giving here are too extreme. Uh, I'm not messing with, with, you know, voltages directly or anything like that. So, um, you know, other than through the precision boost. And as I said, the values are, are reasonably conservative across the board. So it should not cause any issues. Any issues? You can just roll back, you know, and, and the sending is gone. So we go accept in here. And from here, then um, I need to go to precision boost overdrive. So this is the, this is the part I want to be in uh, within the ASUS motherboard. So here currently are the settings I'm currently using that I find the best performance to temperature um, 
settings. So let's just run through them. Try them yourselves, test. As you said, you saw the test you know, prior to this part of the video where I showed the R23 running and, and that's the kind of um, results I'm getting. So have a test and see how it looks on your, um, your PC. The R23 is free to download, so download and test. So within advanced here, um, I have precision boost overdrive here set to advanced. It will probably be either on auto and disabled by default. Um, so the first thing you're going to do, precision boost overdrive, go down and click on advanced. Uh, option one, precision boost overdrive, advanced. Uh, PBO limits, I've set to disable. So this um, just means that the, the, the default limits will still apply here. Um, options two and three that I show, we'll, we'll edit those a small bit. But for, for this um, setting, I'm going to leave that on disable. Uh, precision boost overdrive scaler, I'm going to leave on auto if you have that option. Um, max CPU boost, boost clock override, I find changing the setting doesn't really make much of a difference. So I just leave it on zero. It'll, it'll um, kind of auto overclock itself by the temperature, um, by the temperature overhead that it has um, by kind of doing this kind of undervolt setting here. And platform thermal throttle limit, I've just clicked to auto for, for what the motherboard sets. So curve optimizer is our main setting here. So precision boost overdrive advanced, PBO limits disable, precision boost over or overdrive scaler uh, auto, into curve optimizer. Um, I do a curve optimizer here, probably disabled on your default, hit all cores. Uh, you want to go for a negative, um, a negative uh, curve optimizer here. Negative uh, more alludes to the undervolting of the CPU, whereas positive is kind of more in, into the um, overvolting. So for, we're trying to control temperatures here. And for all these options, I'm using a negative curve. And I found best for this setting at a all core optimal magnitude of 25. Uh, this you know doesn't crash me at all at this setting. I had it at 30. Uh, while I did pass the Cinebench R23, some games cause a crash. So I set it back to 25 in all cores and it's fine. And if you're having issues after applying these settings, after testing, generally I'd run like a Cinebench for maybe half an hour, try a few of your more graphically intensive games. I find that Call of Duty Warzone is a good game to test with. If you get through two or three games of Warzone and the game doesn't crash, I generally find I have no issues. So this value, uh, generally you would set in increments of five. As I said, if we go in, if we click on this here, we should be allowed to change the value. Yeah, so I can go to 30 like this, uh, test and see how it works. I did that, it didn't work very well. So I went back in and just reduced it down then to 25. Okay, so just on 25. So that, that's the settings you want in here. And if we go back out. Option um, two then, which we're going to now discuss, is where we set some PBO limits. And in here, this will allow you to, it'll slightly raise the temperatures, but it'll slightly you know, improve your clock speeds. Now it depends on the SKU of the 5900X and the cooler you have, how well this performs. This is where uh, everything basically says the same. So go into advanced, but now PBO limits, instead of disable, we're going to go to manual. And we have a PBT limit, a TDC limit, and an EDC limit. Uh, from within here then for, so the first uh, option two that we're doing here, these are the settings for a kind of a more medium level cooler, uh, a more reserved settings for uh, getting a bit of extra performance um, and the temperature's not going too crazy. So in here, I would try a PBT of uh, 165. I would try a TDC of uh, 115. And I would try the EDC limit at 150. Okay. So 165 in the PBT, 115 on the TDC, and 150 on the EDC. So on these settings here, uh, everything else will stay the same. The only thing I would potentially go into here is the curve optimizer. And I would look, because we're increasing, or, or looking at the kind of the differences with the amount of power we're sending to the CPU, I would look at potentially reducing the all core uh, optimizer magnitude here to 20. Um, but you could test at 25, you know, see if it works. It, it, you may get that extra increase. It, it, your CPU could be better than my one because obviously the higher we keep this magnitude, the better the temps are. But obviously it's that, um, it, it's, it's getting that setting right so that we get the power and, don't, and it's stable. Um, okay, and again, with this F10 save, you know, start up your machine, 
into Cinebench R20 or R23, let it run for 10 minutes, have a look at those temps, look at the all cores, uh, and see you know how much of an increase you're getting. This option tree now is the exact same thing we've done already, but I'm just increasing these three values here. You can obviously try values in between both or even go higher. These are just a few I've tried and kind of the three levels I found where um, performance has you know shown a decent increase with you know temperatures not going super crazy. So for option three, which is you know getting kind of the most power out of it that I found, um, again I'd want a decent cooler for this. I'm going to go for the PBT of 185. Okay, 185, and remember I keep these within, uh, sorry, 185, never mind that, uh, TDC, um, this one I'm going to set to 125, and the EDC limit I'm going to set at 170. So again, these values I've got from kind of researching online, looking at forums, testing myself, um, and that's why I'm kind of summarizing these videos, the kind of the three best options I feel, you know, for the kind of basic overclocking, with a bit of undervolting. Um, this option, again, this generally got my old core clocks up to around the 4.7 and it'll over and that's where I was kind of seeing the five gigahertz on the single core. Uh, not all the time now, but it was hitting it sometimes. But again, it's definitely worth testing in your SKU because it may operate at a lower temperature by default. It may uh, clock higher in terms of the single core and all cores. So, you, you know, you know, the results you get here could, could, could be very good. Again, assuming you have a decent cooler. And again, I'd also give consideration for the curve optimizer. Again, maybe look at a minus 15 or a 15 here on the negative curve. Uh, but again, test at 20, test at 25. You could have a really good CPU that, that can uh, allow that uh, kind of undervolt to the CPU and, and keep the power. So it's just, it's just a matter of testing. If it crashes, you just go back into your BIOS, uh, lower this value. Now, while you can individually do cores, I mean, more power to you if you if you can kind of take your time to, to work out your best cores and uh, apply individual settings to each one. But uh, for the performance difference, it's just I find go all cores. I, I just deal with the with this number and, and that's what I work with. Um, right. So that's that's the three options that really concludes the video. It's just to show you what I'm using. Uh, hopefully you find some use of this. Uh, hopefully, um, you know, it's, it's I haven't rambled too much, but I hope you can make sense of what I went through here. So listen, have a try. See you get on. Hopefully um, it works for you. Any issues or problems that maybe I can help, just you know, leave it a comment below and I'll try my best to get back to you. As I said, I'm no expert in this. These are just what I have found from messing around, messing on the internet. So listen, hope you enjoyed. Thanks.